And in our next topic on trying to figure out the enthalpy change when we do chemical reactions here is the enthalpy change when we actually dissolve a solid in a solvent. So here we have a typical case. We take sodium chloride, which everybody of course knows, a stable salt, which is a solid. When we put into water, it'll dissociate into sodium ions and chlorine ions. And yes, when that happens, either heat is given off or heat is absorbed. In this particular case, it's an endothermic reaction, so actually heat is absorbed. Heat is taken out of the solvent in order to make this reaction take place. So let's take a closer look and see how that actually works. So here we have a sodium chloride crystal, so to speak, and so we have a small little piece of it, and you can see how the positive sodium ions and the negative chlorine ions are neatly packed into a very dense arrangement like this. And because of that, it's in a very low energy state. So it's actually pretty difficult to pull these things apart. They don't want to be pulled apart. There's a very strong ionic bond between the sodium ions and the, um, and the chlorine ions. So sodium gives one electron away to the chlorine ion. It becomes positively charged. The chlorine ion gets one extra electron. It becomes negatively charged. And those, those opposite charges attract, and they put to get, they, they're pulled together in this very strong lattice. Notice that you'll have a positive charge here and then a negative charge. So this is kind of like a three-dimensional lattice like this. So to pull this apart, you'd have to work very hard at it. You have to put a lot of energy into it. And so the lattice energy has to be released. We have to put 774 kilojoules of energy per mole of, of sodium chloride in order to pull the molecules, or I should say the atoms, apart. Of course, they're called ions because they're ionic. And so to pull the ions apart, you have to put in that much energy per mole. Then, when you go ahead and take those ions and put them into a solvent such as water, water molecules, they're polar, and so the negatively charged end of the water molecule will attract itself to the positive sodium ion, and the positive side of the water molecules on the side where the hydrogens are at, they'll be attracted to the negative chlorine ion and kind of surround them and cause them to be separated from one another. And when you put hydrogen chloride, not hydrogen, but sodium chloride into water, it separates and the ions surround it like that and it goes into what we call then a lower energy state. And by doing that, 770 kilojoules of energy per mole are released in that particular reaction. So it's not a true reaction, of course, it's simply an electrostatic response to putting ions into that solvent water. Now, of course, we can do this all at once. And typically, we take sodium chloride crystals, put them in water, and this happens. So the water molecules will begin to surround these ions, break them apart. It takes a little bit of if maybe agitation. You might have noticed that when you put salt in water, it just doesn't readily dissolve. Typically, you have to stir a little bit to make this happen because it does take a little bit of energy. And if you could measure it, the water temperature will just slightly decrease when you put salt in water. Of course, it's almost not measurable, but it is something. And the reason for that is the amount of energy required to pull the lattice apart is slightly more than the energy gained by putting into the solvent water. The difference is four kilojoules per mole, and so therefore this is called an endothermic reaction. It requires four kilojoules per mole from the solution to make this reaction actually take place. And that's how you can take a look at, and that's a, a look at how you get energy or how you require energy when you dissolve a solute in a solvent. It's a pretty good example.